So what's our what's our opening bit? What's our opening like gag bit that we do? We don't we don't have a bit this week. How do we not have? How do we not have? Because we've done like over ten episodes and pretty much that's it. We we don't have a bit. So what? We're just gonna go to the title card. Hello and welcome to NPCs of Taldore. Um, uh, reviewing episode. I don't, one. Know, why I don't know what you were doing. I just put down my phone and he was just like, "Hey!" And I'm just like, hey. Yeah, <laughs> I just started dancing. Yeah. Um, we are here, no. myself, Oliver, Dungeon Master, and Dave. Are, are reviewing um, episode 104 of Critical Role Elysium. Yes. Which is the plane where some of the gods live. Um, yes. Which I think is, I'm pretty sure, is a plane that Matt Mercer has invented. I've not heard or read about it. Before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, this whole episode was just gone. Because basically, yeah. they went from being underprepared to just nuking the, the guys trying to take over the world with God. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, it makes sense. It was it was fairly intense. Um, it was the role play. Mm. Uh, there was there was no combat, but there was like a kind of combat. Well, the combat esque. Yeah. It was like a combat scenario then without I, actual with combat. Yeah. yeah. It was just one person. But yeah. um, we'll as, go for the episode. Yeah. Mm. Essentially, we started at the Isle of Renewal, mm. which is where um, Saren Ray. Saren Ray lives. Her mm. kind of castle on a, a beach of pearls. Yes, and they did have trouble kind of progressing. Yes. For a little while, um, well, Pike didn't have a problem because you know she's a she's a follower. Yeah. Um, but they managed to kind of like trick the system. So I essentially, guess. they would they would be walking towards uh, Saren Ray's mansion, her temple, mm. her castle, and no matter how far they walked, they would not gain any ground. Yes. Which was an interesting time dimensional space thing that Matt totally stole from my campaign. Yeah. T- yeah. Totally, he did. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> probably the other way around. <laughs> no, this episode came out because remember last time we did Black Winter Nights on D20 Multiverse, they found themselves in the Shadow Forest. Uh, not the Shadow Forest, the Black Winter Forest. No. And they keep traveling. Oh, well. I, even though I'm there. I, <laughs> I ended the episodes, I don't, I don't know So, um, um, yeah. But basically, I, yeah, they, yeah. They, uh, they, were, they were meeting Sarah Ray. They were going yeah. off to find Sarah and Ray to try and, and get. Get power. I don't know what the initial plan was, but just to, just to get enlist some, the help of the god. Help, yeah, um, for some of the stuff that they were experiencing at the time. Mm, um, to be big now. So, uh, Grog uses the longest word I've ever heard Grog use, which was ever present, and then mentioned that his head hurts from mm. from coming up with such a long word. Mm. But the rest of Vox Machina was suitably impressed by this sudden uh, burst of elegant, fluent. He does that. Uh, when, whenever Grog does it, uh, like a really smart thing, or says a smart word, he has to roleplay like, oh, God. Because <laughs> <laughs> and, and what, his intelligence is eight, I think? Or something? something yeah. very low. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and he, he works it very well, but I think he has to battle the... Like, Travis is not an idiot. No. So, so Travis is battling with like the intelligence side of it. And yeah. He has to play a stupid character, but no certain <laughs> things. So I think yeah. once in a while, if there's a bit of crossover, he kind of has to backpedal and just make it make a joke or something reference the yeah. fact that he probably shouldn't have thought of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so that that was a, a nice little role play moment there was some like seriously this is actually 104 ha- is probably top 10 of my favourite episodes in all of Critical Role that I have seen and I've seen a lot of Critical Role what's top 1? Uh, I know you wouldn't be able to remember this <laughs> yeah um Possibly, yeah, no, I don't know. No, you don't know. But yeah, it's up there. It's, um, it's one of my favourites. For me, it's not. Because right. I think it's because I'm more of a story point of view than role playing. Right. And I think I'm, because there's a lot of role playing yeah. side of it, it probably wasn't that high. I mean, it's still a good episode, no yeah. doubt. And I think from a role playing point of view, it was fantastic, especially yeah. later on in the episode when they were discussing, when we get there, yeah. um, certain things about a particular character. I think that was really, really powerful. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, what else happens there? Um, they're, they're enjoying themselves, they're having a good time. Uh, and until, they meet Saren Ray. Yeah. Well, I mean, until we... Oh, until Matt says, mm. just, just by the way, which order are you guys walking in? Who's walking at the front? And suddenly Vox Marking goes, oh crap, oh god, monsters are coming, what, what's going on? Mm. Lovely, Matt, very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it's, a lot of them didn't know what to expect, you know, you get into it's, the lands of the gods. It's one of the equivalents of, like, rolling dice behind the screen with, with no explanation. It always mm. puts the party on edge. Mm. I mean, when you do it, you kind of do it so quickly that we don't have time to think about <laughs> it. And it's like, boom, oh, this happened. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. It's more fun. Yeah. In um, the last episode of um, our show, Eyes of Alicia, 
uh, at the end we had, I could have one of my players visibly shaking as she was like, you know. Because you made the, the damn riddle. riddle. You just riddle after riddle and not riddles. <laughs> you went from zero to a hundred. That's yeah. an argument that we should not have. No, the anyway, no. we had a review critical role. Yes. <laughs> not talking about our game. Um, yeah. So anyway, they, um, in order to meet Sarah Ray or to progress further, they all kind of had to believe. Yes. Um, they kind of had to have that moment of like, yeah, we believe in Sarah Ray. They had to have the Christmas spirit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and but ultimately, they end up meeting or getting access to Sarah. Sarah Ray. And Matt does some amazing poetic storytelling that was just unbelievably beautiful. Mm. And obviously, Pike had probably the best interaction with Sarah yeah. Ray, because it's her god. Yeah. It's the one that she's always followed. The patron and all, saint right from the start. All, all power. So so what's, what's Sarah Ray? What's... So Sarah Ray is quite a few things. Um, Sun is one of her things, along with Paddle, which is probably why they, they, they exist on the god same planet. Yeah. Uh, but mainly she is the god of healing, healing, is one of hers, which obviously fits right in with Pike. With a cleric, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just healing and light. Well, um, yeah, there's, there's a few others. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, also, honesty, redemption. Hmm. Uh, she's associated with a few things, but yeah, essentially a yeah a okay. very fitting god for a cleric. Hmm. So basically, after some some meaningful words with Sam Ray explaining, um, trying to avoid the next calamity, the third um, calamity, the third calamity, um, Pike ends up getting the blessing of the Everlight. Is it ever Everlight? Yeah, Everlight. Yes. Which is whoa. That's that that that's a nice blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's actually another similar uh, blessing bestowed upon one of the other party members in this episode, uh, and uh, no, that's later. On. That is later, later on. on. Um, but yeah, uh, the 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 one that Pike gets essentially, she gets an extra plus ten, I think it is, to anyone she heals. Is that homebrew? Yes, is homebrew I do person? believe this is Matt homebrew. Okay. I'm not a hundred percent on that. I wasn't but I'm sure because sure. I looked it up after the episode came out, and yeah. all I saw was references to Critical Role. Yeah, I'm fairly that, so sure. I'm assuming is, that yeah. it's homebrew. Because 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 he had it on a card that he had, I, I assume, made, yeah. I'm assuming it was homebrew. Mm. Um, which was nice. So essentially she gets an extra plus 10 to healing and can dazzle, uh, I think it's 120 feet, um, generate a light that, that, that blinds anyone in a radius of 120 feet, but she can only use it once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, once a week? Yeah. Seven days, yeah. Seven days, yeah. Um... But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So we, so, we, yeah. Essentially, we got the blessing and, and kind of the power from Sarah, Sarah and Ray. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, Vox Machina got that. And then they... Oh, no, I've got it written down here. So she gets flying speed, uh, 10, uh, 40 feet for 10 minutes. Uh, she gets plus two of constitution. And yeah, her healing spells heal an extra D10. Mm. An extra 10. There you go. Yeah. Um, so essentially, we recruited one god. We've got yes. one god on our side. To help us. I don't know if you count the Raven Queen kind of on the side, because it, she's it tough. did she resurrect v- Vax. Vax. Yeah, she brought Vax, Vax for, back. For the purpose of this. Yeah. But she gets something out of it. Yeah. So, you could say two. That kind of one. Well, yeah, you could say one and a half. 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 Yeah. Um, so the next next god to essentially recruit um, is Paylor. God of Sun and Agriculture. There we go. Or the Dawnfather. Mm. Um, I think that could be something that Matt created the word Dawnfather, or that could be Paylor's okay. Got a long history. We haven't done too much research. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been our day playing munchkin and drinking coffee. Yeah, exactly. That's why we're recording this episode so late at night. So, yeah, we go to Paylor next. Um, that's the next, it's usually God to recruit. Now, the yeah. interesting thing about Paylor, none of the characters follow it at yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, so, basically, they're essentially just going through the box, like, yeah, we'll go to that God, that God. <laughs> um, one of, one of my, my favorite parts of this whole episode is one of the reasons that it's now one of my favorite episodes ever is when Titi, Kiki talks to the, the sun, sun tree. tree. <laughs> and the sun tree is... It's just a dick. I don't know, <laughs> Jack. So uh, I, I like how Matt said he like, rolled a dice and got, an, got a one. Yeah. So he had yeah. to be a complete... <laughs> and I love yeah. the parallel with like, the sun tree, like that's in white stone, it's yeah. chilled out, kind of um, stoner-esque, and, and then this one is just like a complete... Like, why are you assuming I know all sun trees? Yeah. <laughs> just because I'm a tree? Like, suddenly I just know all the sun trees? Like, what are you... I, this is profiling, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. It was the hilarious. classic kiki of just not having things go smoothly. Yeah. It's, it was great. That was just fantastic. Though. Yeah. Um, but anyway, anyway, we managed to... to Go go to go to pay law. Yep. Um, and this I've got written in my notes at all in caps. Best role play moments ever talking to Paylor. Yeah, so so basically um Paylor or they try and get Paylor's um blessing, you could say, or power, or something to help them. Just trying to get him to be on side with the team. Exactly. And his main argument is what well, none of you follow me. I've why got champions I? all over the world. Why yeah. should why should I should 
bestow my power to you guys yeah. and then they basically nominate somebody to well I don't know nominate kind of just Kiki basically volunteered or Vax Vix yeah. no well, well, the first one to volunteer was, was Kiki oh Kiki um, yeah. she said I'll do it immediately I volunteer as tribute <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um, but, but yeah some, some amazing just but then it ended up being Vax Vix yeah yeah yeah. 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 We should clarify that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Kiki was the first. Just put it yeah. Yeah. But in that being being Vix, yeah. um, and then Vix had to go for a bit of a trial to kind of prove her worth. Such a nice trial. And that, it was so time since I think that's the first time for a very long time that he's brought out the hourglass. Yeah. 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 He's, um, it's something very very time sensitive, and it was just like gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Yeah. Um, and then luckily she did all right. Yeah. Um, there was just this moment where, where, where um, Matt presents her with what she's supposed to do, which is get to the, the, the burning brazier. Mm. And it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I can do that. And then he just goes, oh, by the way, here's an hourglass. And they go, okay, yeah. I'm going to... Uh, and I believe Scanlan um, yeah. uses true polymorph on Vex to turn her into a red dragon, yep. which, oh, God, I wish... That's just such a damn cool power. Ever since they just they, they found out they can turn into dragons, <laughs> just they like, use it whenever they yeah. can. Like Kiki just turns into a dragon, you know, once in a while. I mean, it must be a pretty badass feeling being at the level where you can turn into a dragon. Yeah, imagine having characters just sort of randomly turn into dragons. Yeah. yeah. So I've got written down hourglass and battle vox marking a freak out. Yes. So you see them both freak out, which is really good, um, because we're actually seeing the vox marking a really be put to the sword of yeah. the final campaign. Yeah. They're being at a time sort of thing. They're entering battles so that they can't handle themselves yeah. they have to think outside the box in order yeah. to actually defeat the last enemy um, but yeah Vex, uh, Vex managed to, to go through some just some beautiful stuff of, of climbing and, and swooping around mm. and then uh, the, 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 the guardians of Pelor uh, Matt said are like I think it was like 6, 7 feet taller than, mm. than Vox Machina we're talking like Big scary dudes. So big, well, I'm a giant. Size. Yeah, well, the giant. higher, than, bigger than giant. Bigger giants. Giants will yeah. be less. Yeah, yeah, smaller than that, I think. Um, so yeah, um, then there's this beautiful moment where uh, Vex gets to the top of the tower through a whole bunch of uh, you know different different methods. Gets into the fire where she you know believes that that's where she's supposed to be. Her dragon form fades, but then so does her mind, mm. and essentially her soul is gone as well. And she finds herself in what. Um, what Matt describes as oblivion. This is what oblivion feels like. This is what it's like to be nothing, to, mm. to not exist. And obviously she she was feeling that. Yeah. Um, but the rest of the party just saw it kind of... Did they see it? I'm pretty sure they saw it. They saw her go into the fire. Yeah, they saw her go into the fire, but I, don't, I think they... Yeah, she just went. And then, then um, Matt starts... Uh, running her internal dialogue mm. and kind of feeding her this information and you could see her reacting to it and kind of running through the role play in her head he says things like uh, you wonder if you made the right choice entering this flame um, they you know intended to burn away uh, your, your darkness and those who are unworthy but instead maybe it's taking your mind and your soul and, mm. and she kind of freaked out a little bit thinking oh god I've stuck up I've, I've, I've given myself over and it was this interesting moment where she was kind of looking at an empty reflection of herself and, and wondering if that's what that's what it was going to be obviously that's not what it was obviously, I, I, you know, I, I think Laura lesson. Bailey is probably if you look at all the crew of, mm. of Critical Role Laura Bailey and and Liam O'Brien are probably the two that go the deepest with their role play yeah. I think I would agree um, and I think you saw that with Laura being throwing throw these, this thing happening to her and seeing her emotionally react yeah. in character. And she does the, the same thing when, when um, Vax died uh, yeah. the other episode ago. Yeah. Um, I think that, that shows testament to how deep these characters actually yeah. resonate with them. Not, not just that, the intense, beautiful moment that occurred there was rippled through the chat as mm. a whole bunch of people felt right alongside these guys. Because, mm. um, I mean, we have been. I mean, yeah. we've been... We've been following for ages. three or four hours a, a week for a very long time. We're a community. Yeah, and we 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 you know we we feel the same things. Mm. Um, so then uh, there's this great moment where she realizes no, in fact, life has given her this blessing, and it's uh, it's a beautiful thing. Mm. And um, the glass unbreaks, and kind of the, the shattered glass falls back and, and reforms the windows, which was just a beautiful mm. um, part of uh, storytelling. Obviously, Pella's castle, you know, sun, sunlight, had a lot of stained glass and that kind of stuff. That was really, really cool. Mm. And during during the time before we see Vex again, yes. um, so Vex, Vex, Vex again, yeah. have to make sure I get the Vex, Vex, Vex. Vex Starting, right when you start watching Critical Role, like the, like the first couple of weeks, you never get that right. You're always like, oh, it's I, I, so, I mean, I, I've been to the live show, I still don't get it right. Yeah. Um, so basically, before we see uh, Vex again, all the Vox Machina crew kind of 
spill the spill yeah. the guts out about what what Vex means to them. Yeah, Matt 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 puts the spotlight on each individual character and says, well, Paylor, well, Paylor, Paylor, well, Paylor yeah. puts the spotlight Matt, Matt being the yeah. DM and he actually asks each individual member of Vox Machina what does Vex mean to you mm. that was I think that was just a genius DMing at the point where it's, it's such an awesome role play inducing moment um, to, to put a spotlight on one character and say tell us what this character means to you especially mm. after how much crap they've gone through mm. That was just such a good way to facilitate some really awesome role play, and that totally inspired me as a dean. And you got you got real deep and meaningful with with Vax because yeah. obviously her her brother. Uh, her brother. Um, but I think the most revealing thing that came out of this is the fact that Percy is betrothed to Vex, so it means they're technically getting married. Oh, which blew my mind mm. because none of us knew that, and then he just drops that that there. Well, yeah. a lot of people have suspicion. Yeah, mainly. And plus, we did a prediction as well that one of them would get married, but they didn't get married, they just got engaged. I guess. Yeah, I st- I'm still counting that as a win for us. Ah, yeah, yeah me too. Um, <laughs> but um, Percy converts as their betrothed, um, but a, long, a few episodes ago, I can't remember which episode it was, um, Vex mentioned to Vax that she had a particular secret or something or she, she was hiding, right, right, but right. Vax never pushed for that. Yeah. So a lot of people are suspecting that what that was mentioned was actually this, the mm. fact that they were engaged to be married. Yeah. Um, whether that's true or not, not sure. Um, I'm guessing she's not pregnant because otherwise <laughs> I think by now it would have come up yeah probably I'm pretty sure if, if Vex was pregnant it there, there was this like so Percy essentially says yeah my, my, my betrothed and you see all the other members of Ockmark and go I, I like, think Sam <laughs> Sam did it best because he because Percy said it so kind of nonchalantly yeah he just kind of threw it um, and then uh, Scan, oh, Scan, or Matt, or Sam is just like betrothed yeah and he's the only one that kind of just went <laughs> questioned yeah. a little bit and everyone else was just like yeah. Can we say anything right then, now? Right now is not a good time to have this confrontation yeah. in front of Paylor the God. That was fantastic. Um, um, so I'm then, guessing, uh, we're going to have some fallout for that, I reckon. Yeah, yeah that that would, I'm looking stuff. forward to seeing the resolve of that. Mm. Um, but yeah, eventually bless uh, Vex gets the blessing of the Godfather. And, the which, as she comes down. Yeah. Now a follower of Paylor. Yeah, it was a great moment. It was oh, really beautifully done. Champion? 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 I think it was champion was, yeah. the, was the term. Yeah. Um, yeah, so amazing, amazing storytelling by Matt who just lays out this Beautiful, beautiful poetic soliloquy. I knew I was going to stuff that word up. I don't know why I tried to say it. I don't know what that is either. I don't know. He's a fish. I don't know. Um, Go fish. And then there's this great, there's this great moment right at the end. This is that's pretty much the end of the episode. Mm. Around about there. I mean, it, I mean, it, it doesn't sound little, like a lot because it was yeah. three hours though. Um, yeah, it was so it's, a, it's a little bit on the short end, but it was a lot more role playing than story. So yeah. like my notes typically that are about a page and a half. And yep. this one's only like be oh, it's just three over quarters. half, half of, oh, yeah. three quarters. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And yeah, my, my notes again are the same because not not a lot of like specific but, things happened. It just Ollie, it, yeah. not always like that. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. You can't okay. do that in front of me. <laughs> I was hoping I could just slide that in there. No, know. no, it was probably longer than you normally. <laughs> Um, so like the after after uh, and that's where we'll leave tonight's no, episode. Kiki yeah. goes, um, "Is every?" She asks Matt, "Is every episode going to be this emotional from here on?" Because I can't take it. Mm. Uh, yeah, um, it'd be interesting if they're trying to collect all the gods. Yeah, uh, uh, it's going to be. It's going to. Oh, I can. I, it's building. I can feel it building to the to the, to the end, the crescendo. Well, they, they have to do something dramatic, and again, oh, God's God, blessing yeah. is kind of like the ne- the, the best. Route they can go down. Yeah. But it's a question of like so. So we've got we've got Vex who follows the Raven Queen. Yes. We've got Pike who follows Serum Rain. Yes. We've now got Vex, Vex who follows Paylor. Paylor. Yeah. Um, does Keela follow anything? And uh, no, she essentially has her Aramente with the the the, the druids and the. But that's not God. But that's not, not God. That's, that's not. That's not. She's not aligned like, to a deity. So I guess we've got like th- four other players that could be attached to a god. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping one of them is Bane, God of War. He's brutal. Mm, no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, Grog. He does perfect. Grog, Grog could be, He'll yeah, be Grog could align himself to, to, to Bane. The he wouldn't say no to that. No, he wouldn't. Yeah. And, and imagine a, the blessing from that. That's a good parallel, though, because Pike being, being Grog's Sarah. best, best mate. Right. Healing, Healing and war. There you go. Wow. I hope so. I'll just write a letter to Matt just suggesting that. Yeah, how's the other letter going on, <laughs> on the show? He hasn't responded yet. Oh, he's, he's probably just busy. I'm sure it's like top of his priority list. <laughs> no, did Comic Con. What, what email address did you use? I just typed in Matt. <laughs> I, did, I did get like a thing that came back that said 
Email could not be delivered. But <laughs> just I'm, meth. I'm sure that it's just a window. This is an era. It's just all the mets that are in the world. Basically, my, yeah. my brother's met as well. You Eventually, probably got the email too. Yeah, if you're out there and you're watching this and your name's Matt, you probably got my email. But if you could pass that, pass that on to Mercer, that would just help us out. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Um, but so yeah. that's basically the episode. Um, and oh god, it's building, and I can't wait mm. to see. The, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. I have. If I am, if it, sorry, so much coffee. Um, if if I'm work, if I, I gave him my coffee, and he, I don't think he can handle my coffee. No, his coffee is a lot stronger than my it coffee. It is. Um, I don't if, know if you can tell. So <laughs> if if I am working the day of the live stream of the last episode of Critical Role, I will quit my job. Well, Critical so I can Role is ending. No, 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 Vox Mark. Vox Mark and his yeah. journey, sorry. The yeah. end of this campaign, I will, hell or high water, I will be watching the live stream of that. I will be in tears. I will be clapping. I will be laughing. I'll be crying. I'm, and that's that's just what he does when he wakes up in the morning. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he would actually do on the episode. Yeah, it's going to be intense. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, that is our review. Here's a call. question because yes. we're on camera and we have I've to make a call now. What do you want to do for that episode? I I don't know. No, I mean, last time we did a suit, you decided not to wear one. <laughs> but then you made me wear a suit. I made you wear a suit because yeah. you made me wear one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll have to do something special for it for sure. Uh, maybe just do like a here's to a hundred something episodes. Raise a glass of, of coffee and uh, reclap our reclap recap. Maybe, <laughs> recap our favorite moments. I from, you just reclap. <laughs> recap. Uh, re- try, should, should we try do, and talk about the whole journey? Should we do an NPCs like special? Yes, we should definitely. We'll, do, we'll do an special. NPC special of our favorite moments of yeah. Critical Role. And what it meant to us and what the journey... Oh, Vox Machina. The, the Vox Machina Ma- saga. Because awesome. we're going to be moving on to another one. Yeah. Uh, but that's a little tease of what's going to come later on. So yeah. um, let us know uh, what you think of this particular episode. I mean, if you guys have a conversation, do it down below. Leave a comment. We definitely will reply to you. Because yeah. not a lot of people do. So we just And don't. we don't have much else going on. So, thank you very much. Uh, That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Watch, watching Critical Role is basically our lives. Mm. Um, thank you very much for watching episode recap of 104 Elysium. Mm. Uh, looking forward to what, yeah, this week's episode. Yeah, I Next guess. Episode. See you later.